Um, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, welcome to today's uh, 2.8 Techinar about Volta. Uh, with me, I have uh, Grish, Hardik, and Matteo. Uh, they are from the ONF team, and uh, we've been working very hard together to achieve the Volta 2.8 um, roadmap and um, release. So today we'll present all of this uh, with uh, um, detail about the, the release itself. Um, I'll be the uh, moderator and main speaker, and each of, uh, of the team members will present some parts of the end-to-end -end project we have done. So without further ado, let me uh, start uh, the presentation um, with uh, what we're going to talk about today. The, we're going to start the, with the brief recap of the SIBA reference design and the Volta architecture, the project states, and the deployments of uh, the project. Then we're going to talk about uh, the long-term support release and strategy for Volta. And then we're going to go into detail about the Volta 2.8 release. We're talking about persistency at scale, the multi-user network, uh, network interface support, ITF bandwidth profile and TCON selection, performance measurements that and alarms that we added uh, for the platform stabilization that we did, uh, testing and certification. Uh, then we're going to uh, showcase a little bit about what we're going to do in 2.9, which is the upcoming release. At the end, as Denise mentioned, we're going to have a Q&A session where we are going to answer the questions that were posted by you guys in the uh, Q&A box. So as a reminder to everybody, uh, ONF has a software-enabled broadband access um, reference design, which specifies SIBA, which is a lightweight platform for development of solutions for carrier broadband access. The idea is that uh, we have this end-to-end -end definition blueprint of, for several components, software components, and uh, uh, the leverage white box hardware for uh, an end-to-end -end solution that providers can take and deploy uh, for their broadband networks. Uh, we recently released the 2.0 version of the reference design, which goes into detail about the broadband network gateway, the stack modeling for scaling for Volta, de detailed northbound APIs of Volta and other components, especially around device management. This is being released to uh, for public consumption, and we have done a webinar about it. So if you're more if you're interested about uh, the CBA art reference design in particular, I encourage you to go and uh, check these uh, links. Um, before I go forward, um, when I mention the links, you will be able to access the slides. So don't worry about um, losing content. They will be given to you. A huge thanks for this goes to Turk Telecom, um, Deutsche Telekom, Netzia, Radisys, NTT and Siena, which together uh, came and wrote the reference design with us for SIBA. Uh, in particular, as an example architecture, we start on the left with uh, a residential gateway that is connected to an ONU, which is on a palm tree. And on the right, we have the core network of the operator. And in the middle is where we have our hardware and the software as part of the SIBA solution. We have a, white, a set of white box OLTs that are connected to a white box switch or a fabric from the operator. And this comprises of the border network gateway user plane um, on the white box switches, we have connected white uh, compute servers. And then we deploy um, Kubernetes and through Helm, we um, leverage Docker containers for deploying different components. Uh, one of them is Volta. Um, on the white box switch, we have a stratum based um, agent. All of this is managed by NSDN controller, which is Onos, which includes a series of applications that are specific for Volta that control the pawn side of things. Uh, then we have a fabric control, which is Trellis. And we also have BNG applications for the BNG uh, control plane. In SIBA, all of this is managed by the network edge mediator. And that exposes interfaces to own up the operator as BSS and et cetera. Today, we will mostly focus on Volta and Onus. Uh, that is the 2.8 release of Volta. So where do we stand right now in terms of Volta capabilities? Uh, Volta offers a common control and management platform for pawn networks, uh, OLTs and ONUs, 
we are capable of handling different brands of OLTs and ONUs um, at the hardware level. And we provide the, an agent on top of the hardware that is the one controlling the device. Then we have um, capability uh, on top of that to deploy different services that manage these uh, OLTs all through a proper, proper layers of abstraction and store data in a persistent storage. We'll talk about that later. Uh, and, and then is managed in turn by an SDN controller, which is Onus. Uh, all this stack is capable of multiple services for different operator workflows. And it also provides a device management interface for non-data path operations, meaning, for example, uh, what is the fan speed, configuration of the LEDs, the PON ID, and things like that. This is what we call a Volta stack. A Volta stack uh, supports 1,024 subscribers uh, spread across one or more OLTs. And uh, one infrastructure, which means the SDN controller, uh, the storage with the TCD and Kafka supports up to 10,240 subscribers based on 10 Volta stacks. All of this has uh, the capability to be upgraded in service with minor software upgrade, uh, but not only on the software side for Volta and Onos applications, but also for on the ONU, we have the capability to do software upgrade of the ONU as well. Uh, and everything like this is tested with hardware at scale and, at, and with SOAK, meaning leaving it running for multiple days and like observing the patterns of memory and CPU or usage like that. If you're interested about the more of these details, you can go and check out the Volta 2.7 webinar, which is the previous release of this and outlines some of these elements that I just talked about. Before we go forward with details about what we did in 2.8, uh, it's key to say that Volta is already in production with live customers with the two main operators that work with us, which are both uh, Deutsche Telekom and Turk Telekom. As you can see here, uh, they have deployed this with, uh, uh, in both Germany and Turkey with live customers uh, with the software that I just talked about and we'll talk about during this presentation. So a key element of the Volta 2.8 release was that we went for a long-term support, achieving long-term support, meaning that uh, we have made a commitment for the Volta 2.8 release to update, patch, and maintain this software that we put out in the 2.8 release for a long period of time. We did this because we are achieved the point where Volta is stable, is feature-rich, and has reached that level of maturity where it can actually be meaningfully used by others as part of their project or solution. And having achieved this, this is the right point to do an, a long-term support release. And Volta 2.8 will be the first long-term support release of Volta. What does that mean? It means that we have put in place in accordance with our operators and our TST, a process where uh, an LTS release of Volta is gonna be supported for 18 months. When I say supported, it means that ONF will keep testing this at, do, on his hardware and at scale and on software, BB Sim for 18 months and will provide bug fixes and testing. LTS releases are 18 months apart, meaning that we just did one now and the next one will be in December, 2022. Uh, we will move from a three month release schedule to a six month release schedule uh, so there will be two interim releases between long-term support ones. And next, so the next release, Volta 2.9, for example, will be not an LTS release in December. The, the bug fixes that we find on master and interim releases will be backported if they are applicable to the 2.8 release or the previous long-term support release. So this gives the operators and the users a lot more confidence in deploying the solution based on Volta and attracts a lot more users to the platform. Um, just as an example, uh, Manuel Paul, uh, which is, uh, who is the Deutsche Telekom product owner for Volta, uh, says that we they applaud the ONF Volta community for the milestone. And uh, with the current great Volta solution being deployed in production, network disaggregation has become a reality and we're looking forward to continuing this fruitful community collaboration. So this is just a, uh, for us, a huge statement from Deutsche Telekom that supports us and really pushes us uh, to always go for these uh, level of achievements. 
So with that, I'm going to turn it on to uh, Girish, who's going to talk a little bit about the stuff that we're going, we did for persistency at scale uh, during 2008. Thanks, Angie. Uh, so the Volta storage uh, pr uh, through HCD uh, prior to 2.8 uh, release had issues in space occupancy, uh, write speed, and use of persistent storage with upstream bitnami charts that we used uh, you know, prior to 2.8, which was 5.4.2. The 2.8 release, we moved to 6.2.5 version of the HCD charts. So also in the process, uh, we up optimized a lot of data that was actually stored on the HCD store like uh, compacting the technology profile instances, uh, you know, removal of uh, flow storage in the read-write core, because the flows would be anyway pushed from Konos on uh, read-write core restart. Uh, we also optimized a lot of other uh, attributes that were stored on the HCD store. Uh, we implemented a read-through cache in the OpenLT adapter. So this meant that uh, every read and uh, read request uh, need not hit the ETCD ATC, store. And this actually improve, improved uh, the read performance. Uh, we implemented a microservice uh, that periodically compacted and defragmented uh, the HCD store. So this kept the size of the ATCD store under check. Uh, we used uh, NVMe disks on our scale cluster. So this provided uh, you know, a huge uh, read write performance uh, improvements compared to SSG disks with uh, the SATA connection. Uh, can you go next? Uh, so ultimately, we uh, you know improved uh, you know uh, storage uh, on the HCD store. We reduced the storage by about eighty percent, and uh, we had a huge improvement in terms of uh, provisioning one thousand twenty four subscribers. It was under two minutes with persistence enabled, uh, while compared to about uh, eight to nine minutes. Uh, uh, without these enhancements uh, and with persistence disabled. So this was a huge uh, improvement compared to prior uh, older releases. Uh, we implemented uh, the following performance measure uh, measurement counters in the 2.8 release, uh, you know, starting with uh, the NIG self-test uh, message support uh, to fetch the RX and TX power at the ONU. Uh, we can also fetch the ONU pawn and the ONU gem counters from the OLT. Uh, we support on-demand uh, extended Ethernet PM counters, uh, which fetches the you know, free-running counters accumulated across all the uniports on the ONU. Uh, this is an on-demand counter. And uh, we support the Ethernet bridge history, gem port history, and F FEC history L2 PM periodic counters. Uh, these counters are uh, uh, you know, fetched every 15 minutes and dumped on Kafka bus. Uh, we also uh, support uh, fetching OLT transceiver data via the TMI uh, module. Uh, we collaborated with the operators, uh, you know, uh, to get the requirements and you know finally implement all these performance measurement counters, which provides better network visibility, debugging, and live analysis. In the 2.8 release, we uh, uh, supported the IETF bandwidth profile uh, representation. Uh, uh, this actually made more sense given that the operators, uh, you know, Nemlayer used the IT uh, representation for the bandwidth profile. And also the BAL layer, uh, uh, when using Broadcom based OLTs, used the uh, IETF uh, representation for uh, the bandwidth profile. But we do uh, continue to support uh, the MEF uh, definition for backward compatibility for anyone who wants to use it. Uh, we now support, you know, selecting any of, uh, you know, the five uh, possible TCON uh, types uh, on the OLT. So, uh, if you'd like to use, uh, you know, TCON type one, uh, you could you could do so by using one meter band or two meter band. Uh, when you use one meter band, uh, you only specify the GIR, and the burst size is zero. Uh, and when you use two meter bands, uh, the PIR. Uh, you know, rate is equal to the GIR and the GIR uh, burst rate, burst size is zero. If you would like to use TCON type two or TCON type three, uh, you use uh, two meter bands. But in the case of TCON type two, the PIR would be equal, the PIR rate would be equal to the CIR, while in the case of TCON type three, uh, the PIR rate would be, you know, greater than the CIR rate. 
the TCON type four is best effort and you only uh, specify the PIR. Uh, and in case of TCON type five, uh, you know, the PIR is greater than the CIR plus GIR. Uh, you, you use the TCON type that you would want to uh, support the quality of ser uh, service uh, needed by your uh, subscriber. Thanks, Girish. Another... With that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Theo, uh, who's going to talk a little bit about the multi UNI support. Uh, start from there. Um, so, this is uh, one of the biggest features that we uh, introduced in uh, Volta 2.8. Um, until now, the Volta stack had the ability to support a single uni per device, regardless of the number of physical ports uh, that were present on the ONU. Um, a big thanks for this uh, goes to uh, Netia uh, for the huge work that they uh, contributed to the project in this respect. Um, and as of now, um, when an ONU uh, is is reported to Volta, it reports all the ports uh, that are active uh, to, uh, to the Volta stack. At that point, the Volta stack uh, has the capability through uh, a mask that is operator defined to um, enable or not those particular ports. Uh, and then the operator can drive uh, the subscriber provision uh, on each of these uh, UNIs. As part of this work, uh, we had to support two different kinds of bandwidth profiles, what we call the uh, ONU bandwidth profile that really applies uh, to a single uni uh, to, on the device, and what we call the OLT bandwidth profile that manage uh, the bandwidth uh, on, on a specific phone port uh, where multiple ONUs are connected to. Uh, of course, all these efforts support uh, all the operator workflows and the multi tcon that uh, Girish uh, just described. Um, and we also added support uh, for this feature in BBC, that is our uh, emulator to uh, validate the, the stack at, at scale. Uh, the main advantage of this feature is that now we have uh, the capacity of fully leveraging the ONU and OLT hardware uh, and expand uh, the services we can provide without augmenting the, the cost on the hardware. Um, and the, another big part of the work uh, in 2.8 uh, being uh, the first long-term release of Volta uh, was the stabilization of the platform itself. Uh, we made sure that all the components that we're using um, are on long-term support versions as well. So we migrated on us from 2.2 to, to 2.5, that is the latest uh, long-term support release. Um, the ONU software upgrade capability was expanded. Uh, so now uh, you can, uh, you have a specific API to download, activate, and commit uh, the different images on the device. And there was a big effort on the time op optimization uh, moving to the extended frame in the MCI stack. Uh, in the same way, uh, the MCI channel. Uh, that is basically the channel that drives the new configuration uh, was hardened. Um, so we can now uh, handle uh, send or receive failure of some MCI packets. Uh, and we have a retry mechanism in the open and new adapter. VoltCTL, the operator tool to control the Volta stack, was extended to natively support multi stack uh, to add the ability to list groups and retrieve performance metrics. Um, as well as there were some uh, platform maintenance uh, items, such as uh, moving all the Docker image to uh, use a distroless image, uh, and this allowed the root access to, uh, to the containers for production deployment security. Uh, and as you can imagine, in a long-term support release, a lot of bug fixes uh, went into the code. Thanks, Theo. Uh, let me then turn it over to Hardik, uh, who's going to um, show us a little bit of the testing announcement that has been done over the 2.8 release. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Andrew. So uh, the over the 2.8 release, the test suite for Volta uh, 
has been vastly improved and for that uh, first i would like to thank our uh, community members especially uh, anitsia and atran who have really helped uh, in bringing it uh, uh, to this extent and so for now uh, we have expanded the turk telecom hardware test uh, from 5 uh, uh, from volta 2.7 to now 19 and those includes various uh, uh, error and failure scenarios uh, like the disable enable of the ONU, where we kind of uh, bring up the system, uh, we do the basic sanity, we then disable one of the ONUs, and then we check, okay, that the services on the other ONU are not impacted. And then we re-enable that and then see, okay, the service on that particular ONU also comes up good. Same way we do uh, disable and delete of the OLT, and then uh, we check, okay, it should not really affect uh, and the Volta pod as such. And uh, then uh, uh, for the failure or the recovery scenarios, what we do is we uh, restart different Volta components like the open OLT, open ONU, uh, the core and the OF agent. And uh, during that restart and uh, uh, once the services are back up, we just see, okay, that the data plane uh, services are still in place and uh, there is no impact on the subscriber. And then uh, uh, we do a delete and re-add of the subscriber, like uh, doing a reprovisioning and just see everything works fine. And uh, the scenario is like, um, we uh, we do the reboot of the ONU and the OLT. Uh, we do it through the whole CTL uh, uh, reboot command, which is a soft reboot. And then uh, we also do uh, you know, uh, turning on and off the power switch of the ONU and OLT and just see if everything uh, uh, comes up back as expected. So yeah, all the scenarios which were really the part of ADT and DT until uh, now are now also part of the uh, tech telecom testing as well. Um, Andrea, uh, can you move to the next slide, please? Yeah, uh, so all this is done on the XGS1 white box OLT uh, and we are using ONUs from different brands and uh, using the multiple technology profiles uh, for different service needs uh, as required by the Turk telecom uh, workflow. So as part of uh, 2.8, uh, we have included some new tests. Um, as just a couple of minutes back, Tio talked about the multi-uni uh, feature. So now we are testing multi-uni uh, for the ATT on our uh, uh, broadband simulator uh, to the software. And then um, the functional uh, suit for the Turk Telecom that's running the multi-uni on our one of our hardware pods. Uh, where we have the multiple ONUs connected, and then on one of the ONUs we have uh, the different uh, multi uni enabled, and yeah. Uh, the next thing uh, that we have added is the perform performance metrics, um, and then uh, the multi decon scenarios. That again uh, we are running with that for the Turk Telecom, as Girish said. Uh, uh, we are now capable of testing, and uh, we have implemented all the multi decon scenarios. And uh, yeah, whosoever is interested can uh, uh, really go to our Jenkins and uh, uh, take a view of those. Then we updated our uh, software, uh, the ONU software update uh, with the new APIs of the download, activate, and commit. Um, thanks to our partners, uh, we have created this test to use the latest APIs. And then uh, we have also added uh, the automated soak testing for DT. And uh, to point out here now uh, for DT, we are using the IETF format of the band profiles as Girish mentioned uh, a couple of minutes back. So yeah, all that information uh, of the tests are available on our uh, Jenkins site. Then we added some uh, OMCI chaos monkey test cases as well. And with all that and uh, uh, our nightly jobs and scale tests, now we have uh, uh, 180 plus hardware tests that are currently running on our Jenkins. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, we have achieved a good number for the 2.8 for all our different uh, uh, operators. Yeah, thanks. Over to Andrea. Thanks, Hardik. And just as a quick mention, if you're interested, you can see at this link uh, all the tests that we run for 2.8, uh, hardware, BB Simbase, the scale tests, and SOC. So just go there. And this is where we will actually base ourselves for the support of the release. So whenever we see a failure there, we will have to go in, investigate it and fix it and put and put out a new version of that component uh, where we made the fix or multiple components so that uh, uh, the release is still uh, passes all the tests um, during uh, nightly tests and uh, 
skill testing. So um, one thing more that we did in the 2.8, and which I'm, I'm really I'm really happy for the collaboration that we had with Radisys, was we actually certified a new OLT. So with Volta 2.8, we added as part of the um, OLTs that Volta can uh, control the 3200G uh, GPON OLT. This is a pure white box OLT. It has 32 GPON ports and it uses the open OLT agent and adapter. Uh, this uh, OLT was shipped to ONF uh, after some work uh, from Radisys where they had to uh, put the open OLT agent on top of the box. They had to make some changes. They contributed those changes to the upstream open OLT repo. And uh, the OLT was shipped to ONF. We plugged it in and we now have it as part of our nightly tests where we actually tested the Deutsche Telekom workflow on this one with uh, uh, the Zircom FG1000 uh, ONUs and it performs flawlessly. So uh, a huge kudos to Radisys for bringing this up with us. If you want more information, you can go uh, on their website and this actually adds itself as, a, as an OLT, as a certified OLT, to the um, other OLTs that we have certified or in progress of being certified at ONF. Um, this is uh, very similar to the to edge core OLTs in the sense that it uses the open OLT agent and open OLT adapter code, which is the open source upstream code. In progress, we have the Adron um, SDX uh, 62, 6320 uh, GPON OLT that is in our Berlin lab and uh, that uses a little bit different approach where we actually where they actually don't use the open OLT agent nor the open OLT adapter but they have their own software on the box and they provide to us a version of the open OLT adapt uh, a version of the OLT adapter uh, which is called the Adtran OLT adapter that uh, and there's lots in, in, in place of the open OLT adapter and uh, has the same APIs and we can, uh, so uh, from the rest of the stack, nothing changes. Um, so the Radisys uh, 3200 GG pod is in progress, uh, sorry, is certified. The Adtran uh, SDX 6320 is in progress. From Radisys, we actually have two more devices coming in uh, that will be certified uh, very soon. Uh, as always, you can go and check the marketplace to keep you up to date for the certified pro products. And the interesting thing for everybody is that the operator's procurement is based on successful ONF certification. So uh, certifying the hardware for, for Volta is, and from, for Radisys is a huge milestone for them because it, uh, it puts them into place uh, uh, with the operators where they can just point to the ONF certification and say, oh, hey, we know this works with Volta. So whenever you're buying from us, you're buying something that we know works with Volta. And ONF says that it works with Volta. Um, so let me just uh, take some time to recap exactly what was done in 2.8. We uh, spent a lot of good effort and time to achieve ATCD persistence at scale with the new ATCD version of 6.2.5 and the upstream dynamic charts. A huge, huge thanks goes here to uh, the ONF team, especially Grish uh, and, and Matteo uh, on, on, on doing this, but also to Siena for, um, for contributing a lot of uh, great contributions, especially David and Ken. They made some great, great contribution in these areas. The then uh, Volta 2.8 um, included multi-uni support with all the testing. A huge thanks to um, the Netzia folks for uh, the implementation side of things in Onos, but also on the testing front. Uh, it's a long list of names. So I'm not going to call them everybody. And from the ONF side, Hardik really uh, stepped up here um, for the testing and Matteo for the implementation on the BBSIM front. So thanks a lot for all of that as well. We included the ITF bandwidth profile to support especially the Deutsche Telekom workflow uh, for uh, to be compatible with their OSS, DSS. Again, thanks to all the ONF team, really we all came together here uh, and the, the Netzia folks as well. We have the 5 tcon selection capability now to support all the bandwidth and QoS requirements. Yet again, thanks to Netzia uh, and the ONF team here. We extended the performance uh, measurement and alarms. A huge thanks here goes to one person from Siena, which is Imani. Uh, um, great, great contribution that came in and we extended a lot of this. Um, with the platform stabilization, a lot of contribution came from all over the place. 
uh, we extended, we moved to almost 2.5 to give us uh, the uh, amount of life we need to go to 18 months of release with almost supported in those 18 months. We moved to distress images. Uh, we did a lot of bug fixes. There were really uh, quite some convoluted bugs that were fixed during 2.8. Uh, the hardening of the OMCI channel, a huge thanks to Adtran for that. Uh, uh, extensions of Vault CTL uh, and the ONU software image update, again, a huge thanks to Adtran for that. Um, expanded the testing suite, as we, as, as Hardik said, um, 12 more tests for, for Turk Telecom, uh, a huge thanks to NetCI and Alarms, the OMCI, thanks to Adtran and Torsten in particular. And the certification of the Radisys 3200 GOLT, a huge milestone from from the Radisys team and uh, a huge contributions from them also in uh, announcements to the OpenOLT agent, which is uh, upstream and consumable by everybody. If you want to read uh, more about all of this that we have done and the things that we have uh, um, achieved in 2.8, and I do, I'm sorry if I forgot somebody, but I just wanted to make sure that at least uh, some of the contributions were really highlighted. And you can go ahead and read the, the release notes uh, here in Volta 2.8 uh, um, page in the docs um, that's available. And um, before we close, I want to just give it a little bit of a nudge on what we're going to work on in 2.9. So the key element, the big element that we want to do in 2.9 we, it's going to be the migration from an inter-adapter communication based on Kafka to an inter-adapter communication based on gRPC. Uh, so instead of using a bus, we're going to use direct one-to-one -one communication because we have one um, instance of all the services, and that's going to provide us better speed, better serialization, and uh, less uh, delays and wasted time in, in that reading from the bus and things like that. Especially given that our internal API is this protobuf based, so we it is using already uh, using gRPC. It, it's basically a natural fit. Uh, then we're most likely we want to modulize the new adapter code and do a per um, device per or a new uh, flow flow configuration channel based. Uh, to avoid some of the existing locks that, uh, while they do work, they provide they they do complicate the code a little bit. We want to extend the Turk Telecom multicast tests and work with IGMP at scale. Put some resource uh, limits on the containers. Extend even more the uh, performance measurements and alarms that uh, uh, we discussed. We want to continue the Adtran and Radisys OLT certification. As I said, the the Adtran is in progress and Radisys has two more that we want to certify. Uh, so that's going to come in. And interestingly enough, one of them is going to be a, a combo pawn. Even the Adtran one is a combo pawn is only turned on in GPON mode at the, at the moment. We want to extend uh, more tests with the multicast IGMP and uh, multi UNI tests. We want to possibly uh, upgrade BAL, we are, which is the software that uh, um, Broadcom provides for the chipset inside the OLT. We want to move to a further release. We are not quite old, but stable, long-term support uh, release, but we want to upgrade that and um, possibly even MPLS support. Uh, those are things that uh, it does depend on the community to come up. We cannot do everything as ONF, so it really depends on the community stepping up and filling some of the gaps uh, here for these features. Uh, and speaking of community, a huge, huge, huge shout out to everybody in the Volta uh, and CBAC and all those communities we wouldn't have achieved uh, what we just described without the contribution of everybody. Um, me, Matteo, Girish, and Hardik are the Volta team at ONF. There is nobody else. So there's no way we could have done this uh, without the help of everybody here. Um, especially in this release, I would really, really like to thank uh, Netzia, Radisys, Adran, and Siena for the great contributions that they did. Uh, there were a lot of folks coming in, uh, obviously Turk Telecom and Deutsche Telekom from an operator side, but uh, there were really, 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 really good contributions from these folks. Um, and I cannot stress how important it is for us to have this such a, a vibrant and helpful community to achieve the results that, uh, that we did. So that said, uh, I'm just going to leave you one follow-up link, docs.volta.org. In there, you can find everything you need to start it, start it out with a software-based uh, deployment with BBSIM. 
or uh, go more in depth and have your hardware deployment uh, and see the release notes, uh, more documentation, everything is in there. Just go ahead and take a look at that. If we, we will have some Q&A now, so I do encourage you to type your question. I do see some of them in the Q&A box. So please go ahead and type your question in the uh, Q&A uh, and we will answer them live. But if you have some questions after, uh, which uh, came to mind after reading the slides, uh, just go ahead and uh, um, fire us an email. Uh, it's a fairly simple email. It's first name at opennetworking.org. And you can see, you can find them all, uh, all here. So with that said, um, I think we can go ahead with the Q&A session. Um, the first question is that uh, um, asks that we mentioned on a slide deck that a total of uh, 10,240 uh, ONUs can be active uh, and supported by 10 stacks of Volta. And the question was, with, is this with HSIA traffic or just ONU activation? So um, let me just give you a little bit of background on how we do test at scale. And uh, maybe Theo, you want to take this question? Uh, yeah, I can take this one. Um, so as you can imagine, we don't have the, the space and the power to do scale testing uh, on real hardware. Uh, so the way we do scale testing is that we created an OLT and a new uh, emulator that is called BBSIM. Uh, and it completely emulates the flow handling and the control packets uh, that the OLT uh, and the new exchange with Volta, as well as the OMCI stuff. So when we do a scale test, we basically um, enable uh, the OLT and all the ONUs. Um, the stack goes through the entire uh, OMCI exchange with each ONU. Uh, and then we start provisioning subscribers and flows. Uh, what that means is that depending on the, um, on the operator workflow, there will be one or more services provision for the subscriber, but there will not be uh, any um, data plane traffic going through uh, the system. Um, that has been implemented that way because the data plane traffic doesn't touch any Volta component at any time. So it doesn't really make sense for us to test our, uh, our code with the real, uh, with the real uh, internet traffic. All we need to do is make sure that if a 1024 subscriber tries to authenticate at the same time, those packets will go through the stack and we need to support that. Same way, uh, if they try to get an IP address at the same time, those packets again go through the stack and we need to guarantee that that works. Um, does this answer your question? Uh, and another small clarification, um, on this question, when we test uh, uh, 10 stacks at scale, we actually run two LTs per stack with 512 ONUs each. Yeah, thanks, Theo. I think it does. So really to summarize it is the, the flows are there. So the scale uh, of which we need to test Volta is present. It's just that the traffic does not impact the scale at all. In Volta because it doesn't go through Volta. So we need to test the provision of the subscriber or you bring up and that's all tested, but the traffic doesn't impact. Uh, okay, so the next question is, uh, is there an expectation on Volta to have high availability using Kubernetes on multiple nodes or just fail restart of the pods will be available? So maybe I can take this one. Uh, the idea is, is that uh, we managed to achieve the capability of each service within Volta, except the Onos cluster, and let me talk about that a little later. Uh, we achieved in Volta that each service can restart without having an impact on the data plane of the customer. Meaning that if a subscriber is provisioned uh, and uh, the core restarts, there will be no impact to that subscriber. Um, and the traffic will go through. So he's watching a movie, he's still gonna watch a movie while the core of Volta restarts. That's not an issue. So that's the way we did within Volta. So at the moment, we don't have the expectation to have a multiple core, multiple adapter scenario. We just keep that capability to restart without being service impacted. 
That does not hold true for Onos, ATCD, and Kafka. Um, in there, instead, we use a different uh, approach, which is actually a cluster. So whenever we deploy Volta, we deploy it usually on a three node Kubernetes cluster. And on that three node Kubernetes cluster, we also deploy a three node Onos, three node Atomics, three node ATCD, and three node Kafka. So there we actually do use uh, um, multiple nodes of, the, of those specific services to make sure that uh, when a failure happens, it does not impact the network. So that, those are the two approaches that we use. And with Volta 2.8, with the TCD, we turned on persistency. So even if the whole cluster of a TCD goes down, you should be able, you are able to bring everything back from the physical disk where the data is stored. Hope that answers your question, Marcelo. Okay, so there was another question on a multiple ONU. Does Volta 2.8 support handling of uh, both untagged uh, traffic based on the SCP values or tagged and the tagged packets? Um, Girish, do you want to take this one or should I? Uh, yeah, I, I can take that. Uh, we do not support DSAP marking yet, uh, but uh, you know the RG could send uh, untagged traffic or tagged uh, uh, traffic. The traffic is classified right now based on the payment. Uh, we do not do any DSAP uh, uh, based classification yet. Uh, so yeah, we do not support it at the moment. Also, uh, it's not yet a requirement from uh, any of the operators, but we, we would definitely be I'm glad to support this uh, when such a requirement comes. Thanks, Girish. One thing that I forgot to mention is that in Volta 2.9, we will most likely uh, include the Telecom Italia workflow. Uh, we are working with them to support their workflow, which is a little bit different from the workflows that the different operators have uh, asked us right now. Uh, the Telecom Italia workflow is a single tag, or you tagging the packet, uh, adding the tag instead of the OLT. So it's a transparent OLT for wording. And that's the only missing uh, uh, combination of tags that we cannot really do in 2.8, but uh, we're working with Telecom Italia to include that in 2.9. So just about tagging of the packets, not really related to the question, but something that I wanted to add. Okay, maybe Girish, uh, if you can, you can take also this one. Um, the Emiliano asks, uh, is there any plan to implement the RG management through OMCI? Yeah, so, uh... The goal of Volta was to manage the PON network. And uh, I believe you know, the PON network ends at the ONU. Uh, the RG management uh, would, would uh, in my opinion, uh, would fall outside the purview of the Volta stack. So I don't think there is any plan to support this at the moment. Uh, you know, uh, again, uh, unless uh, you know, some operator comes and you know, is and we have a request for that, maybe we'll think of supporting that. Yeah, thanks, Girish. The, the really uh, what, what we are saying, and uh, this comes a, as an answer to maybe even the prior question, this one is, uh, there's, it, it's software, we could do it, but there's, uh, there's it, Volta is really driven by the operators. So our operators, especially Deutsche Telekom and Turk Telekom right now, are the ones that create the roadmap. And it's an open process, meaning we start discussing the roadmap with them, and then we take the roadmap to the community and hear the input from the community as well. But the, the key points of the, of the roadmap of each release are driven by the operators uh, and our members. So if, uh, if any of these points is of interest to you, you could go ahead and uh, uh, come, to the come to the community calls, the PST call, and join that and bring in your, your requirements uh, as a member of ONF. Uh, and if they are aligned with the ones of our operators as well, we could prioritize them and put in the implementation for that. Okay, so there was another question which asks, was type A, B, and C protection also tested? Uh, yeah, I can take that. Uh, uh, we, we do not support uh, type A, B, C protection features uh, in Volt at the moment. Also, this would require you know migrating to some later versions uh, of the BAL. I mean, if you are using it, you know the Broadcom-based OLTs, uh, uh, so th that would require migration to latest version of BAL to uh, have in support for certain protocols needed to you know, implement this type ABC protection. 
Yeah, no, we don't have that feature yet. Okay, thanks, Girish. Um, the last question we have, but I encourage the folks that are attending to put in more if they have any, um, is uh, uh, to um, uh, ask if there are any requirements from the operator for network sharing as license. So at the moment, uh, uh, not uh, not on the roadmap, meaning our operators really, when do they deploy Volta is on their, their managed network. It's their network, it's their pawn, it's their fiber, it's their devices and their OEMs. Um, so that is really one, uh, one operator managing that network. Mm. So that's it. Our operators don't, have not asked for it. Um, Again, in theory, nothing prevents us to do it. Uh, or you could do, even do it at a higher levels because Volta is capable of doing a per subscriber configuration. Um, so the subscriber, we don't particularly care to which operator uh, the subscriber is attached to. Maybe you could do it at a higher uh, OSS, BSS level, but we haven't given too much thought into this because it was not a requirement of our operators. Uh, guys, anything to add to that? Okay. Um, the another question on scale. Um, it was a requirement uh, uh, that asks yeah. since Sonos and Volta handles trap to host packets and also MCI packet in and packet out features. It would be good to test data also. That's a very good point. I, uh, I can go back to that. Um, so the trap to host packets uh, are exactly the one we're testing at scale. Uh, is the one that our simulator is capable of generating. Uh, and so for each of the subscriber, uh, for each of the 10,000 subscriber we're testing at scale, we initiate uh, the ePOL and the HP workflow. Um, and what happens is that BBC will generate packets that will be uh, trapped by the, uh, by the OLT and sent through the stack, through Volta, through Onus, uh, up to a radius or DHCP server, depending on the case, um, and back to the device. Um, so that is completely tested at scale. Uh, in the same way, BBC emulates the entire OMCI stack. Uh, so when an ONU is reported um, to Volta, uh, the entire MIP database uh, is downloaded from the ONU and all the uh, all the various decont uh, all the various means that are required are configured in the emulated device. Um, the the reason we don't test data packet is that even with real hardware, uh, they take a completely different path. Uh, there is no way uh, a plain uh, data packet will will end up in the Volta stack. Um, and that for us will mean really testing the capability of the physical device more than the capability of the Volta stack. And considering we're not in the business of building devices that's outside of, of our scope, that's up to the vendor to guarantee that their device can uh, send out that much traffic depending on the specification. That's exactly, thanks Dale. So every control packet is actually tested at scale. Uh, data packet, not. That's the distinction. If you want more details uh, uh, on, on scale, there's a whole page on scale in the docs. Uh, and you can also go and check uh, what exactly the test does in our Jenkins view. Yeah, okay. also maybe a little uh, uh, misleading the packet in, packet out messages in Volta, uh, but those packet ins and packet out are really only for control packets. No other kind of packet will go through the site. Yep. Okay, uh, there's another question. Uh, does the open new, open new, new Go uh, adapter support the 10G port for XGS pawn as part of the multi uni support? Um, anybody wants to take it? Yeah, uh, I can take that. So uh, it, it supports you know, any uni port uh, on the ONU, but at the moment, I don't think we have tested uh, 10G port, uh, but I think it should just work. Uh, that would you know, require some you know, changes on our infrastructure, and at the moment, we have, haven't been able to do, but yes, it, it should support. 
Yeah, thanks, Gage. From the Volta perspective, there's really no difference from a 1G port to a 10G port. The configuration from OMCI is the same. And if the ONU accepts the configuration, we're good to go. So for us, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. That's, that's what we say. Uh, it is true that we have not tested it. Uh, we have plans to do so with, within the next month. It's just that we need to find, you know, it's a little bit more complicated to actually get the 10G interface in one of the servers where we have it, where we have for the testing and provision all of that. It's just not as straightforward as using one of the management ports for the 1G testing. Okay, so a further question is, won't the change from Kafka to gRPC cause problems if a clustered approach is also employed to open OLT? and other type of adapters. Um, so definitely we, uh, we have uh, um, given some thought to the fact that Kafka is a persistent bus, while gRPC it is not. Uh, but at the moment, uh, we, we don't actually leverage the persistency of Kafka uh, for the messages. So we always request an ACK back from the, from the other um, service that we send the message to over the bus and thus that's precisely the way grpc works so from that point of view we don't there's no going to be a problem but and also we're not going to actually work on a clustered approach to manage the same olt with two volta stacks that's not going to happen uh, you really have to think as a, as volta as one component that manages one or two or three olts if and if that goes down those olt go down um, we don't expect that to happen because that would mean that the whole server in the in the service provider network goes down. But um, that's not a, that's not really a requirement to have a clustered approach controlling the same OLT. So we don't see G, uh, the move from GR, from Kafka to gRPC being an issue over there. Um, Andrea, I think the question was slightly different uh, and maybe driven by historical memories because. Um, back at a certain point, we were using multiple open and new adapters uh, to mm -hmm. configure the uh, news on one OLT. Uh, for the same reason, we could theoretically use multiple OLT adapters uh, to control different devices in the same stack. Um, and that is actually already supported by the code. And the code is designed so that migrating from Kafka to gRPC uh, won't be an issue. Because uh, we have to consider that um, there are some parts of the adapters that are the stateful. Uh, so we don't have the ability to manage uh, the same device from multiple instances. Uh, so even as of now, if you want to use multiple um, open or new adapters to uh, control different news on the same device, you should be able to, uh, it's supported in the code. Uh, but once your ONU is assigned to one adapter, all the messages for that ONU will be delivered to the same adapter. And that will work in a, precisely the same way via GRPC or Kafka. Okay, thanks. Uh, while we are on this topic, there is another question that says, do we intend to use a specific version of gRPC for interior component implementation? Do we have any data on improvement being seen with the using gRPC instead of Kafka? Those are very good questions. Uh, I, I don't think we have a specific gRPC version set up yet. Uh, we will use uh, um, the same we use for the northbound APIs of the core, for example. And in terms of improvements, uh, um, I don't have the numbers. Um, the person, which is Ken from Siena, who has implemented this, uh, mentioned that he, he saw performance improvements. And uh, he also uh, uh, fixed some race condition based on some initial implementation of this work uh, that was done some during this last month. And so we are in the process of setting up a job where we uh, actually uh, will test these, uh, this move, and that can give us better results uh, on also performance improvements. Yes, there will absolutely be some performance improvement in the data uh, exchange, simply for the fact that we are removing one step for each message, because now the message will go component to component instead of component to Kafka to component. Um, but the main 
advantage of this migration will be uh, a simplification in the code and a simplification in the infrastructure and one less component to manage in your stuff. Yeah. Okay, last two questions, uh, given that we are almost at the top of the hour. Uh, the first one is, does Volta 2.8 support SNMP NetConf interfaces or any plans in the future roadmap? So there's two sides to that question. One side is as southbound towards the devices and one side is as northbound towards any other controller or uh, any other components. So on the northbound, we don't have it. We're not going to implement it. And that's not on the roadmap. So the northbound off Volta will be gRPC and will stay gRPC. If somebody else wants to build a component that interfaces with Volta and speaks uh, NetConf, that is totally something that can be done. It's not even that difficult, uh, but it's just not on the ONF roadmap. On the southbound, that's a little bit of a different uh, um, scenario because on the southbound towards especially the OLT, we have the capability to uh, swap in and out the adapters. So the open OLT adapter, which is the upstream open source code, speaks gRPC to the open OLT agent, which is the element that sits in the box. And that gRPC channel is what is in the open source right now and is what is used to manage that OLT, which is a white box OLT. The, but as I mentioned, there are other vendors which are using their existing software on the device, which speaks uh, protocols such as NetConf. And with that, you just bring in another adapter, which instead of talking gRPC, talks NetConf to the device and talks your, your model. So Volta is, is capable of supporting NetConf on the southbound. Is not just part of the open source solution because the open source example platform, which is uh, open OLT agent based is gRPC, but nothing prevents you as a vendor to bring in your OLT, which speaks NetConf and bring in this adapter, which speaks NetConf to your OLT, and then you're good to go. Uh, that has already been shown as working uh, with Adtran. So the further question is any plan to support multi NNI or ring protection on uplink? It's a very good question. Yes, it's on our roadmap, but we just have to figure out exactly the best way to do it. It's a requirement that comes from Turk Telecom. Um, it might get into the 2.9 roadmap. I just haven't discussed enough with Turk Telecom about this to decide whether it's a priority and we need to put it into 2.9 or it's not as a high priority and, need, and not to put it into 2.9. So it's on the roadmap. It's something we will end up doing, the multi NNI. Uh, not just, I don't know exactly the priority of it. That's my take on it. Uh, unless somebody has anything to add. No. Okay. The last question is, does ONU adapter support different type of unis on a single ONU? Uh, VE, IP, and PPTP on the same ONU? Well, uh, 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 I have, I don't have a definite answer for this. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we support both VIP and PPTP ports. So, but we have either tested only PPTP or VIP. The multi-uni feature, you know, came in only in, the, in, the, in, the, in this current release. So we haven't had a chance to you know, see if a combination of these ports work. Yeah, I don't have a clear answer for that yet. But yeah, this is a good test case that we should include. Yep. Yeah, I don't see why it shouldn't, uh, but it's, it has never been tested on us yet. Yeah. Yet. Yeah, yet. yeah that's, that, that would have been my answer. We haven't really tested it. So I, I couldn't, we couldn't give you a definitive answer. Separately, they're supported. That's all, that, does, that is as much as we can say. We will test it. Okay. Uh, okay. Any final remark, guys? Thanks everyone for joining. Thanks everybody and have a great uh, day, evening, night, wherever you are in the world. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.